Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Crafting a Photograph, the series where we help one another grow as artists and understand the medium of photography just that much more so that we can use that information practically in the real world while we're shooting. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about one of the essentials, one of the building blocks and the foundation of creating good photographs, composition. Some might say that exposure and lighting should be talked about first, but I would disagree. And this is my channel, so we're gonna talk about it in the order that I wanna talk about it in. I think that composition is one of those things that can start being trained before you know anything about lighting or exposure, your f-stops or anything like that. Having the eye is something that everybody talks about. You have those photographers that just understand and they see the composition before they even take the photograph. This is something that you're not necessarily always born with, but you can train yourself and develop this as you further yourself in your career. So, really slim, basic, uh, what is composition? Composition is about how you, the artist, choose to relay the elements within your photograph. Throughout the video today, we're gonna be looking at a lot of photographs and a lot of photographers who do composition very well in each of the different levels and categories that we're gonna be talking about. So don't be afraid to stop the video at any time and do your own independent research on these artists. So let's go ahead and just dive right into it. So the first one that we're gonna be talking about today is leading line. And about two years ago, when I was starting school, I had an assignment on leading lines because I had to take the prerequisite basic classes. And I remember so very distinctly getting a C on this assignment. And I think the reason why I didn't fully grasp leading lines is because every, every photo that I was exposed to when it came to leading lines was a little predictable. Train tracks leading to the subject, uh, lines that shoot right into the frame. There's not anything incoherently wrong with these shots, it's just that it's very basic. And I kind of took that as that's all that you can do with leading lines, which is very wrong now that I know. So fast forward to today, and now I understand how leading lines can be used in an image effectively and what kind of photographers are good at it and who's done it really well in history. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Using leading lines is essential to giving your photo structure. You can draw the viewer to any part of the photo that you want by using leading lines. Let's take a look at this photo taken by Henry Carter Opresson. He's a very famous photographer and coined the term, the decisive moment. This is a very famous photograph and is used for almost any examples of leading lines. So I figured that we would do one that is universally known. Our eyes are guided by the staircase railing all the way from the left of the image and swept to the right, where we're dragged back to the left side of the image where we are met with the subject of the photograph. This photograph is an excellent use of leading lines in a way that it directs attention to the whole photograph while simultaneously adding character to the main subject. Another photographer that does this very well is Alkin Hassan. On. He constantly uses leading lines in a way that draws attention to the image as a whole while also making the subject blend beautifully into the scene. Some other photographers that you can take a look at are Joel Sternfield, and Luca Campigoro. The second thing that we're going to be talking about is direction. And this is something that I think gets overlooked a lot. I know for a fact that when I was starting off in photography, I didn't really understand the planes in which my photographs would be represented. When we're talking about horizontal or landscape photographs, our eyes as a viewer go from left to right. So what I would do at some points was I would crop my horizontal images into vertical images just because I think it looked better when in reality, it didn't read the 
same because vertical or portrait mode photos read top and down or down from up. Some really, really good examples of using these types of composition vertically are Ansel Adams and his photos of giant sides of waterfalls, mountains, and monoliths. And some really good examples of horizontal compositional formatting is Dorothy Garcia Rodero. Dorothy's photos are absolutely stunning to look at, but the way that she sets up her photos in the horizontal direction makes the photo flow so easily and it just portrays to the eyes a lot better. The third thing we're gonna be talking about is framing. This is something that a lot of photographers do and it's something that a lot of early and upcoming photographers do consistently because it's one of the easier compositional strategies to try and look out for. However, what I think that a lot of people miss is the importance of what's being framed. Creating a compelling image is always at the forefront of the photographer's mind. And framing it is a one-way ticket to making that subject feel important. In episode four of Crafting a Photograph, we'll go into depth even more about this, about better subject matter. But for now, let's just think about whether or not our subject is heroic enough or important enough to shoot in a frame. Framing draws attention to a certain spot in your photograph, and it may not be the whole entire photograph and the subject in the center. It could be something that's happening that's really busy on the side and having something framed off to the left while we miss what's on the right and we can see what's happening right there. And then as we take a step back, we notice the whole image. What I'm trying to get at is that it's a super powerful tool. So take your time trying to find things that are worth framing. Essentially, you're taking a photograph inside of a photograph. Some good examples of a photographer who does this really well is Dan Jin. Dan Jin does a lot of street photography and he frames his subjects beautifully within links of fences or anything that really stands out to him as he's passing by. Now we're going to be talking about layering. Layering is, a, layering is an important part of creating a cohesive photograph. What many upcoming photographers don't realize is that they get so caught up in the subject that they forget to take a step back and realize what's happening around the subject. When you take that step back and realize what's in your foreground as well as your background, you can create a greater depth in your photo. When you shoot landscapes, this is coming from personal experience, it's really easy to just get fixated on on the long vistas out ahead, but always keep your eye out for what's happening right in front of you and what it can do to the depth of your image. I don't know if you've ever looked at a Bob Ross painting before, but he always starts off with the vista and the mountain in the background. Then he comes up and he does the river and then he does the sides. But what always makes his painting so magical is all the layering that he does, paying attention just as much as the giant mountain in the back to the foreground and the trees and the river as he does the whole image. Some really good examples of photographers that do this really well are Edward Bertinsky. As well as Joel Sternfeld. Now this is my personal favorite type of compositional strategy and this is called getting close. This is something that a lot of upcoming and new photographers are really uncomfortable with. And I was for the longest time as well. It's not, it's something that I even still to this day second guess every once in a while. This isn't for the faint of heart. It's gonna make you uncomfortable and it could make somebody else uncomfortable. But if this is the type of photography that you'd like to do, then you have to realize that these are the sacrifices that you're gonna have to make. Oftentimes, nothing kills a photo more than distance. By getting in close to the subject, the viewer can really pinpoint what you, as the photographer, first noticed whenever you were going to take the photo. The viewer is forced to look at all the small details, all the subtle little things that are a part of the subject. Some great photographers in this area of expertise are Bruce Gilden, as well as Martin Parr and Vivian Meyer. I've done a video on Bruce on this channel before. If you'd like to take a look at some of his other work and kind of take a deep dive into his career, you can check out the banner above.
Now this next one is another one of my personal favorites when it comes to shooting and that is symmetry. Symmetry is all about creating a sense of balance and harmony within the photo. And there's this sort of just underlying feeling of <clears throat> whenever you look at a symmetrical photo, something in your brain just goes <clears throat> It's so good. Symmetry is obviously when one side mirrors the other, um, but I feel like a lot of photographers tend to take it a little too far, so do be warned. There is such thing as being balanced and being boring. You don't want everything in the image to be completely mirrored because then it just kind of feels phony and, and perfectly in place and like it's just there. Some really good examples of artists using symmetry, actually I think you would better be suited looking at artists in the filmmaking industry. Artists like Wes Anderson, as well as Stanley Kubrick. These film directors are notoriously known for having amazing composition throughout their movies. And I think that photographers could really benefit from looking at other mediums besides other photographers as well. The next compositional strategy we're gonna be talking about is called filling the frame. When lining up your shot, pay attention to the subtle movements that you need to make. Half an inch to the right, maybe a half step back. It's important when you're shooting a scene to line up everything perfectly so that you can create something that is widely represented throughout your whole photo. The best way to do that is by filling the frame. Filling the frame simply means having little to no negative space within your photo. So that means having the bustling streets of New York City without little to no sky being shown or a really busy street or something that is taking over the whole entire image. Some photographers that do this really well are Martin Parr, Andreas Gursky, as well as Edward Bertinsky. Now this last strategy that we're gonna be talking about is one of the most crucial and important pieces of compositional strategies that any new coming photographer should absolutely have in their arsenal. And it's something that every single photographer should know. When I tell you that this is the most important, I mean it. This compositional strategy is simply called F the rules. Something to note is that there are really good photographers and they conform to the rules, but, but really great photographers often break them. I talk about this more in depth in part one of crafting a photograph that you can watch above if you click the banner. Make sure you guys go check that out so you can further understand what I'm talking about here. All of the things that we've talked about in this video so far are important. Absolutely, without a doubt, you need to know this information. Here's the thing though. Great photographers understand all of this, yet still choose to break the rules. That is why they're great. Once you start seeing all of these compositional strategies out in the world on your own, even without your camera, then you know that you're growing and excelling as an artist. Once you understand that, then you can create your own chaos. You can add terror. You can add, you can add horror and drama to all of your photos by creating tension with off-putting lines and, and crooked horizons. Make things unbalanced and off-putting. Create a sense of rush with motion. Break the rules and do what you want, but still understand that all of those compositional strategies that we've talked about in this video so far still apply to your photo. People will still see them. And above all else, the last thing that you should do is play it safe. Some photographers that you can check out that I think do a very great job of breaking the rules are Lee Friedlander, Diodo Moriyama, as well as Robert Frank. 
We've gone over so much in this video and I really hope that you guys have learned something and are going to be able to apply it to your own photographs as you head out into the field or your next photo shoot or anything like that. As you progress as a photographer, these things start to pop up more within your field of view, especially even if you don't have your camera and you're noticing these things out in the real world. I feel as if after taking a look at all of the photographers that we've looked throughout this video, I think that it's really important that we go and look at each of their portfolios and understand what makes these photographers so good. So I will be putting all of them in the description down below where you can check out their portfolios, their prints, their books, etc. And you guys can go and support them as well as learn from them as well. The only thing left for you to do is get out there and practice on your own. So this is going to be the end of the video. Thank you all so much for joining me for another episode of crafting a photograph. I hope that you were able to learn something that you can apply out in the real world and in your field. Like I said, all of the photographers that we talked about in this video will be down in the description. So go and check them out as well as head over to my Instagram, TikTok, and my website where you can go and check out some of my personal work as well as more tutorials and videos on influential photographers. I am running a print sale right now with a 5% off discount so you guys can pick up your prints as well. I freshly stocked them and there are 23 in stock right now. Once those are gone, that is it. So make sure you guys get a print for your own. It'll be hand signed and sent out within one to two days. Um, ba -ba -ba. Thank you all for joining. Now get out there and tell a story without saying a word.